Thank you very much for joining us for part two of this fantastic masterclass with Rob Beach and Brad Seahusen. We have already talked about the early days of Church Online here at Hillsong Church, uh, those early days of strategy meetings and implementation, trial and error to kind of get us to where we are now. And here in part two, we're going to talk specifically and drill down on where we find ourselves in this moment, challenges, opportunities, and the things that we're working on. We already talked plenty in our first part about the challenges early days moving to church online and now we kind of find ourselves here some kind of 18 months almost two years later and the pandemic is not just this thing that's a blip on the radar it's something that stayed with us for a long time so brad can you tell us a little bit about how we are navigating the challenges that come with that longevity of the season the pandemic i know that screen fatigue is a real factor and people are just less interested in kind of tuning in how do we keep making things like church online feel like appointment viewing rather than just something people can catch up on whenever they feel like. Is there anything that you guys have worked on or learned at this time to kind of help with that? I think it's important to um, constantly ask yourself, why would someone want to be a part of the live church experience yeah. versus uh, watch a message in their own time, listen to a podcast when they're walking their dog, which is all uh, great ways to consume content, but it's not just about consuming content for us here at church. And I don't think it should be for any church. It should be about uh, creating community and cultivating community. And so for us, as you said, it, ha it has been difficult. And we had a moment in the middle where the church was reopened and, and people came back and they came back in force and they were there every week and it was great. And then Delta came along and, and it locked up again. And, and, and we, we kind of saw a behavior in people where they were fully in and leaning in to what we were doing at the beginning. And then we started to have to have these conversations about how do we can keep that momentum and right. how do we keep the invitation? How do we keep people wanting to participate in what we're doing as a church? I wish I had the answers. I don't have them all, but I think um, at a very practical level, we we formulated a I guess like a task force group that of people from different departments and different teams and volunteers and staff, and they're just people that have carried the weight over the last eighteen months. Yeah. And on a weekly basis, we have the conversation about how do we keep things fresh yeah. in these church services? What do we need to do? Or what do we need to present to our leadership uh, to say, here's what we might be able to come up with so yeah. that people feel like if they missed out on Sunday morning at 9 a.m., they've missed out on church. Yeah. And, uh, and so much of that is, uh, is language, right? Is the way that you choose to speak about church online, the way you choose to speak about the online experience. Those are the things that make it feel like it's, unmissable as opposed to something you can catch up on later on yeah the language that we use uh, on the platform off the platform how we communicate through our social media and uh, when we email the church uh, but even down to an organic level of the the invitation to a friend like to send them a text message and invite someone to sit with you in church and we say it's a bit cheesy but it's never been easier to invite someone to church and th but that's actually the truth yeah. because it just like you would send a funny TikTok to someone or a meme to someone it's sending a url to someone saying hey this is a message you need to hear or this is um something i think you need to be a part of yeah. um and if i believe that if the church feel like they can be proactive in in helping build and helping with the invitation that they will keep showing up yeah Rob, talking about um, things that are both opportunities and challenges at this moment, I know that um, social and social media will be one of the biggest ones that we are kind of um, developing an approach to as a church. Talk to us about that in the area where you go, this is something that we need to see as a great benefit, but also a real potential risk as a to church online. Yeah, hi. Uh, it's, it's a journey for me in my own thinking. Um, I have adult children and a, a you know a 22 year old, 18 year old, and a 13 year old, and I, I even watch the way that that has changed over the years and how they interact with it. And um, uh, this, uh, we we just experienced the 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 Facebook and Instagram crashing for like six or 12 hours. That was the right. Other the day. world stopped. And um, the world stopped. What I found interesting was so many people saying like, I had a break. Like, right. like, like, I, I feel better. Like, how do we create this world where we don't have this anymore? And it wasn't just, it was like millennials saying that, you know? And so I'm very conscious of the fact that we utilize social media to connect with people, to communicate with people. Um, and I'm also challenged by the negative uh, side of that. 
uh, I, I read a book a, a couple of months ago by an incredible author, an individual. Uh, his name is uh, Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs. And um, he uh, um, obviously is a rabbi, and, um, but he, he studied moral philosophy at, at university. And the, the book's incredible, it's called Morality. Um, but he, 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 he talks about this transition of culture, um, particularly people living um, you know, in, in countries like America and Australia and UK and Europe, we have more opportunity than ever in the sense that we can go to a supermarket, buy our groceries, cook dinner. We don't have to have you know, a farm. Uh, we don't have to go to the local village on the weekend. We don't have to depend on one another to survive anymore. Uh, and so there's this, been this movement from a we, a, a group culture into an I culture. And some of it's been important around self-esteem, but with, the, with, the, with social media and that scale, we've become such an I culture. Right. Um, but I often look at, you know, the, the, the divide that we're seeing right now, the mental health around social media. And, he, and the point being that Rabbi Sachs makes is that we have to move back from this I culture into a we culture. And it's so important and, and in the sense that we talk about love thy neighbor in this pandemic, in, in what's happening in the world. If we just care about our neighbor, if we just put each other first, if we love one another like we, like we love ourselves, I believe we'll find that unity. So that, that's the challenge. Uh, that's, a, a, that's, a, that's a lot. That's another but, um, masterclass in itself. How it is. Handle that. But Church Online, I, I, I am conscious of that. And I think we have to create a space for unity. We have to create a place where it's people coming together and people connecting with God. Right. And I think on that, the... The isolation is real and it's a real place. And it has been for the last, uh, for the entire pandemic that people, uh, not everyone has a partner not everyone has housemates or flatmates and not everyone has a pet. And I think if, if you're isolated at home and you're on your own and they're the people that we're reaching, we're reaching families, we're reaching individuals, we're reaching uh, people with or without a pet. And the scripture is very clear where two or more are gathered. And I often joke that if it's just you and your dog, then God is there. But when it comes to church online, uh, it's not about isolation. It's not just about one. And that's why we do really, really simple things like the church lobby, like put in the chat, let us know where you're joining from, your name and, and where you are. So that the minute we can say like, hello to someone, hello to Michael and hello to Sarah, that it's not them on their own and it's us together. And it's, it's we, it's not us, it's not one. Yeah, that's good. I think one of the big um, challenges that I know a lot of people will be facing when they're kind of working through an online church platform for their own church and their own community is how to make sure that it's not just people watching, but it's people engaging. And so what you guys are both starting to talk about here are strategies where you're drawing people out of themselves and drawing them out of their isolation so they become contributors to the service rather than just people who are sitting back you know, with the metaphorical popcorn just waiting to be entertained. Yeah. And I know that you and the team put a lot of work into that. So um, tell us briefly about even new initiatives like the prayer wall, what that's meant and how that's kind of changed the face of our church's prayer life in this time. Yeah, prayer has always been um, at the very heart of uh, what we're about as a church. And traditionally you would come to a Hillsong service and you walk into a foyer and a pastor would welcome you or a team member would shake your hand and maybe you'd grab a coffee and there's, there's, in, there's engagement, there's community, there's people that you saw last week. And, but even if it's your first time, uh, someone is still saying hello to you. Someone's still saying good morning, good evening to you. You find your seat. Someone shows you where you're going to sit. Uh, you meet the person to the left and right of you. Yeah. There, every, uh, every avenue at a church service, there, there is some form of community and some form of connectivity. And so we looked at church online and our services and, and not forsaking that, but how do we uh, cultivate that in a digital medium? How do we make sure that when someone opens their laptop and they uh, participate in a service, that it's not just consumption and it's not just watching, but they feel like they're in church. And, and one of the big things of that was prayer, was um, the prayer wall that the digital team have created. Um, the ability for someone uh, to visit the platform and submit a prayer that is publicly displayed. Um, but not only that, it, we've also created it in a way that our church can visit that prayer wall, visit that space and be praying for other people. And so I could attend a online church service. And uh, when the pastor says, um, if 
if you need prayer or we'd like to pray for you, why don't you submit a prayer request? We made it very simple. The on-screen call to actions through lower thirds um, or text that goes on screen. Um, but, a, but a church member or anyone visiting can submit a prayer and can be notified that they're being prayed for. Yeah. And we continue to be a praying community. Um, and we will continue to do that. We will continue to use that as we go back to physical services, yeah. as um, as you'll experience in this Worship and Creative Conference. Yeah, I like that a lot. Rob, Brad's talking here about um, distinctly, but kind of intermingling the physical experience and the digital experience, at least here in Sydney and in parts of Australia, looks like we're coming closer to kind of meeting in physical services by the time most of you watch this. Hopefully you're in church, um, wherever you find yourself around the world. But we now know that online church is an important part of what we do as you know the body of Christ. How do you see physical services and online church working together? How do you see them um, complementing each other, not competing with each other? Yeah, we're, we're still on a journey there. Um, uh, I do believe they complement one another. That's, that's the strategy going forward. Yeah. Um, I am also a massive believer in the physical gathering. Uh, I think, um, what, you know, I've, I've said for years when there's been a reluctance around streaming like a conference or streaming church or whatever, you know, maybe people will stay home because they just, they don't have to get out of bed and drive. Right. But yeah, I've always thought, you know, when you, you hear the music of a band, like a, you know, your favorite band, you want to go and see totally. them live. You want to go with your friends and connect with them. You want that experience. And yeah. so I don't ever think we should be afraid of it. But we use it as like an opportunity to invite people in. And, you know, as Brad said before, it's, it's, it's people at home on their own. It's people in hospitals. It's people, you know, um, not feeling like they're ready for the pressure of being around hundreds of people. Yeah. And we, 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 we use that online service to draw them into that, into that physical community. But there's people that will, might stay in that space for a long period of time and we want to make sure we connect with them. So to answer your question, I think we have to build both together at the same time. Yeah. And the word hybrid is being thrown around more and more and more now, but it's about creating the opportunity where that, you know, we've taken our notes on our phone in services for a very long time now uh, I love the idea of imagine if you could like interact with people who are watching online whilst you're watching the physical service and then vice versa. Um, could we actually potentially create that experience? And this is where we get into the more forward thinking. But um, I see them working hand in hand. We're quite careful. We've, we've pulled together a couple of um, our, you know, the, the people who, uh, who are better trained, uh, the theologians among, in our church and in our leadership. And we've started to even talk about you know, even the basics of, is it church online or are we actually creating an online church? And what we've settled on right now, which is, which is a conservative, but, 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 I, but I love it perspective is, is that we're taking church and we're putting it online because we still want to see people come into community. And we'll do that through connect groups, um, yeah. Bible studies. Yeah. So One of the things that we've talked about prior to this was even that um, we're like you said, in a privileged position as a church, we have campuses in lots of different locations. But what this allows us to do is to reach people who aren't physically able to connect because they live too far away or because of their own season or stage of life or whatever else. So um, I love the analogy you use of how you would listen to your favorite band and it just makes you want to go to the in-person experience more. You don't go, oh, I've seen them on YouTube. Like it, they enhance each other, hey. Yeah, totally. Um, and I, you know, this space between churches, I, you know, whenever you've, um, if you've ever been on, which you would have been, but if anybody's ever been on a plane, I remember, you know, when you're in a city or in a town and you have to walk or drive somewhere, somewhere I mean, traveling, you know, 10 kilometers or 10 miles feels like a long distance, right. right? So then you get on a plane and you just can't believe the amount of space yeah. that there is yeah. between locations. And um, if, if the Church of Jesus Christ, the capital C, is about reaching humanity, um, then we can use this as a medium to reach the space between. And whether that's the space physically or the space emotionally, um, it, if, even in our own church in Sydney, there's, we, don't have, we don't have a church 40 kilometers away. There might be another really great church, but maybe they're interested in connecting with us. Maybe we can help them get connected to, their own, to, the, to a church local to them. There's a lot of space. I would say, and um, we'll touch more on this in the final part, but um, prior to March 2020, prior to the COVID pandemic, our online church streaming experience 
was about giving people a window into what happens at the Hills campus and what happens physically here at Hillsong Church. But since that, that was really a line in the sand from March 2020 onwards, it's now about taking church through the online medium uh, to the homes of palaces and prisons, the four corners of the earth. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. We're here for one more part and we'll be talking about the future for the online church medium, where to from here and the things these guys are most excited about. So make sure you come back. We'll be right with you.